It's holding nothing. Praise the Lord, if it's holding nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. We're told in nothing. Praise his name. Praise the Lord. We're told in nothing. We're told in nothing. Praise him. I surrender all to you. We're told in nothing. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise his name, praise his name, praise his name, praise the Lord. With all in nothing, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Amen, amen. Amen, amen, and greetings, greetings, and welcome to our teleconference. God bless you for joining us tonight, and tonight we want to declare the name of the Lord. We want to worship and glorify the wonderful name of Jesus, because His name is to be praised from the uprising of the sun to the going down of the same. The Lord's name is to be praised, and truly our God is good. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. He's always victorious, always watching over us. A great, big, wonderful God. God bless you. I just want to start with a short prayer. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everyone that's joining this teleconference. I pray you will be with us. I pray your blessing will be upon us. I pray you inspire our hearts to your word. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory for all that you have done, all that you are doing and what you have yet to do. Pray you take charge of this part of the service and we give you glory and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and greetings again and welcome to our teleconference and we're going to continue <coughs> continue our segment on our Lord, our healer and we are specifically dealing with healing in this teleconference. This is part three. We have done part one and part two where we mention the word of God, how the word of God has healed so many in the past. You know, true, he is God, 
and let's face it that he has the power um, you have like in this world we have physician who specialize in in special part of the body so we have physician that specialize in the heart we have um, physician that specialize with the lungs the kidney the um, the liver uh, and various part, various part of the body we have physicians and doctors that deal specialize in, in various parts of our body but with Jesus, Jesus covers all so we are subtitling this today as the Lord Jesus is a universal restorer. Jesus is the universal restorer. It's to say that it doesn't matter what problem we have, whether it's physical, whether it's our body, whether we have problem with our body, because we have so much ailment in our body we have so much different complaints that our body can emit to us from time to time, from the head down to the toe. We have so many things. But Jesus specialized in all of them because He specialized in all of them because He made us. He created us. He knows what we're made of. If we have a vehicle and it has a problem, we go to a mechanic, a mechanic knows how to repair the vehicle. If we have any physical ailment, it's not only physical but spiritual, mental, we can go to Jesus because Jesus is the universal restorer. He can restore any condition that we find ourselves in, any ailment from the crown of our head down to the sole of our feet. He knows every part of our body. Jesus knows every blood vessel. He knows every artery. He knows every, you know, the Bible says, even the hair in our heads are numbered because God is so, you know, is omniscient. He knows everything. He knows every single thing about us. And when we understand and know about God, we can say we can rely on Him because we know His power. His power is knowledge, His Word. And how powerful is the Word of God. So we're going to look into our God, our Healer. And we subtitle the Lord, the Universal Restorer. He is the universal restorer. He restores everything. He said, Behold, I make all things new. Everything that God made, He can make it new. And then we think about, you know, Abraham and Sarah, when Sarah was past age. And, you know, she could not conceive. And because she could not conceive, the Lord, oh, praise the Lord, she could not conceive the Lord opened her womb in the old age, in her old age, that she conceived and bring forth. That is the power of God. That is the power of that is the power of God. He can restore any condition. And sometimes when we are ill, all we need to know is who is the restorer. And there's only one universal restorer of any ailment that we may have, and that is Jesus. It doesn't matter what it is. We can count on Him. We can call upon Him. We can rely on Him. We can trust in Him. And so I want to look at Jesus and the universal restorer. He can restore all things. So, in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 to 5, it says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrow. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus had stripes. His stripes was not in vain. It's true his stripes. The Bible tells us we are healed because his blood was shed for us, 
for our healing, for our deliverance. His blood covered all. The word griefs is a Hebrew word called chokcholi, which means sickness. He has borne our sickness, Jesus. So whatever sickness we have, he has carried it. He has borne our sickness. He's carried our sickness. We don't have to remain sick if we know Jesus. We can call upon him. We can ask him. We can pray to him and say, Lord, you see my condition. And so many times people have called upon God and he's carried their sickness and heal them. He's a great healer. And the word sorrow is a Hebrew word moko, marko, which means pain. So he's carried our sickness and our pain. And the word heal. And by his stripes we are healed. Roughly, roughly is the word heal. We are healed by his stripes. Are we healed? So the, the, the job is done. The job is done because his stripes has already made, given us healing. We just have to believe and accept it, like everything else with God. You know, when God make a promise, God is not, the Bible says, God is not slack concern his promises as men count slackness because you know man will promise you this they will promise you that and when the time come nothing happens but God is not such God is not slack concerning his promise towards us so we want to think about Jesus and the power of him to heal or oh, any sickness any trouble any disease any ailment, you know, there's nothing that God cannot heal. Our God is our healer. Our Lord is our healer. Jesus is our healer by his stripes. His stripes. That means the price for our healing, the price for our deliverance, the price for our pain. It's already paid. The price is paid. So, you know, we can believe, we, be, we, we, we are healed through faith, through believing in his word. If the Bible says he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow, it means that he has already done the job. But we have to receive it through faith. And faith is so essential to our healing so essential and when we look at peter um in peter um chapter one chapter two verse 24 it says he himself born our sin is in his body of the cross so that we might so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness by his womb by his wounds, by his wounds, by his wounds, wounds are we healed. So dear Peter, repeat what Isaiah said. They, they, it is paid. It's like if we need something to be done, we may, you know, in this world, like we may pay advance for the treatment. You know, some people get private treatment from doctors. They pay advance for the treatment. But so the, our healing, our deliverance, it, it has already been paid for. It has already been paid for. So what we need to do is just to receive it. We just need to receive our healing by his wounds. Peter mentioned by his wounds we are healed. His wounds has gone 2,000 years ago. It's paid. Our healing has been paid for. Our health has been paid for. So what we need to do is to receive. Trust God. Accept it. 
and thank him. When Jesus went to the cross, he became sin for us. Jesus was righteous. Jesus was sinless. Jesus, the only man ever walk on the face of this earth without sin. The only man. He became sin for us that we would be righteous of God in him. He, Jesus, took stripes. He was beaten for our healing. That is the price God Almighty paid for our healing. It's not something to be paid for. It's already paid. So when we understand this, that the price of our healing has already been paid, we should just receive our healing through faith. Because Jesus is the universal restorer of our health. He's the, restu he's the, re he's the universal restorer of our peace. He's the re universal restorer of our joy. Everything that we need, He's the universal restorer. And we need to just accept this through faith. Uh, Peter, he went on to say, uh, Jesus took the stripe and was beaten for our healing. He was beaten for our healing. In, in physical health, emotional health, healing, and the health are ours. Whether it's physical or emotional health. So sometimes we do have emotional health. Sometimes we do things get on top of us and we have, you know, we get, we tend to get stressed. But he has paid for that too. We don't need to be stressful. We don't need to be fearful. He has paid for everything. The songwriter says, Jesus paid it all. He didn't pay some of it. He did not just die for our salvation. But he was beaten for our healing. Physical health and emotional health. Because he is the universal restorer of our well-being, of our health, of our joy, of our peace. And in, in the book of Psalm 103, I think this is the psalm of David. Hear what David said. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgive all thy iniquities and heal all thy diseases. So this is what David experienced of our Lord. He spoke this word boldly, in confidence. He says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And said, forget not all his benefits. Sometimes we tend to forget what God has done. But David is saying, forget. He's talking to his soul. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgive all thy iniquities. He has forgiven us all our iniquities. And who heal all our diseases you know when we have to what we need to do stand upon the word of God God is not like man God word is sure the Bible tells us that God was so sure the Bible says the word of God is like a two-headed sword dividing even the soul and the marrow the word of God is sharp powerful there's nothing more powerful than the Word of God. And as children of God, we have to stand up on these words. David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits, who forgive all your iniquities and heal. He didn't say some. All. God, don't heal some and leave some. All your diseases. Remember the benefit that come from accepting Jesus as your Savior. When we accept Jesus as our Savior, we don't need anything else. We don't need anything else. When we have Jesus, we have everything. 
I'm not, it's not two ways about it because he is the provider. He is our healer. He is our deliverer. He is our high tower. He is our lily in the, of, of the valley. He is our bright and morning star. He is the light of our life. The benefits include forgiveness of all sins and healing made possible. That is the benefit. So, when David says, forget not hear all his benefits, the benefits include forgiveness of sin. That is the benefit of, that Jesus gave us. That is the benefit. <laughs> you know? In this, in this life, you know, you may go and benefit and you get money from the government and that's your benefit. It helps you through the week. They have it through the month. That's your benefit. That, that's what the world gives, the benefit. So you go to the, uh, the, the wherever, and then you get benefit, and the benefit keeps you going. But with God, His benefits is great. Forgiveness of sin and healing made possible. This is the Word of God. He is good. He's a good Father. He gives good gifts and provide healing for us all. If we understand who God is and what God is, and the love that God has for us, we would not be at all fearful or worried about any circumstances or situation that we may find ourselves in. Because His blood, Him coming down to earth and live and died and suffered for us, has paid all the cost. Every cost that we may occur is paid it. He has paid it all. And in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22, hear what the wise man says. My son, give attention to my word. Incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Give attention. Give attention to the word of God. Incline your ears to what God is saying to us. He says, my thought for you, he wrote in Isaiah, my thought for you is good and not evil. God's thought for us is good. God's will for us is that we are blessed. God's will for us is that we prosper and be in health and be joyful and happy in Him. Give attention to the Word of God. Give attention to my Word. Incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Do not leave, wander away from God's word but stand upon his word keep them in the midst of your heart keep them in the middle of your heart why because they are life to those who find them life to those who find them when we find the word of God they are life and it's also health to our flesh the word of God is health to our flesh we only need to trust Him and to believe in Him. That's all we need to do. Trust Him and believe in Him. It is all done. It has all been paid. So it says, this word is life. His word is life and health to us. His word. The word of God, the word of God is our life. It is our life. It is our health. We don't have to suffer. We don't have to be in pain. We don't have to, you know, be you know, worried about our health condition. He is our life and He and health to us. The Word of God, the Bible it says, the Word brings healing. The Word brings heal. The Word of God brings healing because it's powerful. Imagine that just the Word of God. Was the heaven created? Was the earth created? Just His Word. 
He didn't have to do it. He just spoke the word. Just speak the word. What we meditate on and focus on will bring us life or death. Whatever we meditate on. If we meditate on God, and if we meditate on the word of God, it will give us life. David said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. So whatever we meditate on, whatever we, th we, we think of, it will either give us life or death. If we think of the word of God, if we think of the goodness of God, if we remember all his benefits, if we forget not all his benefits, as David says, we have life, we have health, we have strength, we have endurance. Because we have God. God is in his word. God is never separated from his word. God cannot be separated from his word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. God cannot be separated from his word. And God cannot turn back on his word. So we want to look at this healing that um, Jesus did. As recorded in Matthew's chapter 9 verse 20 to 22. There comes a woman who had some serious problem. I said serious, serious problem. Because she had what we call an issue with blood. In other words, she was bleeding. Constant flow of blood. And if we can even think about that, it's inimaginable. You can imagine what it would be like. It's just that like we don't have word to describe what it was like if you're there. And everywhere you go, you are bleeding, bleeding. And the Bible says she spent all she had. Like she spent every penny she had on physicians. She was going from one physician to another. And they were taking her money. And nothing was being done. Because, you know, there are certain things that only Jesus can do. There are certain things that only the Lord can do. No man she would just she would, she would be just keep spending all her have on physician and getting nowhere but she heard of Jesus she heard of Jesus she heard of a man who could heal a man who had the power to heal she heard about the universal restorer which was Jesus she believed and had the confidence that if she could only touch him, touch him, touch the hem of his garments. She believed in her heart. She, there was no doubt. If there was doubt, she would not be pressing. But there was a crowd, throng, and people gathered around Jesus. Maybe hundreds of people. And she couldn't See, she could hardly see him, but she said, I must touch him. Because she knew and she believed. And so with us, in every circumstances, we must believe that Jesus is able to restore any condition. In verse 20 of Matthew 29, it says, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years, can you imagine, came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. That's a long time she has been suffering. 12 years, bleeding, flowing blood. But she knew she needed someone, she needed help. And she had faith that this man 
was a universal restorer. It doesn't matter what it was, but she knew I have found the universal restorer. And if I could only touch him, I shall be well. What a confidence. What a confidence this woman had. And so this woman, she said in herself, if I only may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Hallelujah. So God wants us to have confidence in him. This woman had confidence. That's why she got her healing. She had confidence. And when she touched Jesus, the Bible said Jesus turned around. And when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter, because your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. The woman was made well from that hour. Why? Because Jesus is the universal restorer. That's what Jesus is. He's the universal restorer. And even this happened 2,000 years ago. He is just the same today. He is just the same today. And we can reach out. In any condition we are, have us find ourselves, we can reach out like this woman did. Whatever the condition, whatever the circumstances, we can reach out just as this woman it's no different. She reached out by faith. If I could only touch his garment, I shall be made well. And when Jesus saw or felt it, because in another scripture it says, he felt virtue came out of him. And he said, who touched me? And she saw, said it was I. And he turned and said, Thy faith, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. We will meet you where your faith is. Jesus will meet us where our faith is. Our faith is a connection to God. Our faith connect us to God in a, in a wonderful way, in a powerful way. Our faith touch God, the Almighty God, the Creator of all things. Our faith touch Him. He will meet us where our faith is. Reach out and touch Him. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You will find he's not too busy to hear our hearts cry. He's passing by this moment. He is passing by this moment. Our need to supply. He's passing by, brethren. He's passing by. Who and what we put our faith in matters. It is very important that we must trust in God. It's very important that we understand who Jesus is. That he is the creator of all things. He's the word that created. He is the word that created the heaven and the earth. He is the word of God. And then we look at Luke chapter 6. Verse 19. The whole multitude. Luke chapter 6 verse 19 says the whole multitude sought to touch him. For power went out from him and healed them all. Gee, isn't that great? Isn't that great? The whole multitude. You know, multitude is not five, fifty, twenty, hundred people, a couple hundred people. It's a great amount of people. 
When I heard the word multitude, I'm thinking about thousands. The whole multitude sought to touch him. But you see, God's power, God power, God, God can his can't lose his power. His power cannot be diminished, demise. He's all powerful. He has the power. All power belongs to God. And no matter, it says the whole multitude in Luke chapter 6, verse 19, the whole multitude sought to touch him. For power went out of him because he's powerful. Our God is powerful. For power went out of from him and healed them all. It didn't heal one and two of them. I didn't heal a hundred and fifty or a hundred or two hundred. The Bible says, and many has touched him. Power went out from him as long as we touch him and heal them all. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, it says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When I started, I mentioned that Jesus specialized with all every organ that is in our body, whether it be lungs, heart, kidney, liver, um, whatever it is, any organs in our body, every sinew, every blood vessel, Jesus knows them all. He knows them all. He created them. He made them. So Jesus went through the villages and the towns teaching in the synagogue, proclaiming good news of the kingdom and healing every disease. That means it doesn't matter the type of disease, whatever disease it is, and sickness. It doesn't matter what it was. He is the restorer. He is the universal restorer. Healing every type I'm saying type, it says every disease and sickness. Jesus healed every disease and sickness. We don't need to be sick when we know Jesus, when we trust him. It didn't say he healed some, he healed every diseases and sickness. So this is the man Jesus. Jesus only did what he saw his father doing. He is the business, he's in the business of healing people. <laughs> Jesus is in the business of healing people. That's his business. Everybody has different business that they specialize in and whatever, you know. But this was the business of Jesus, healing people, preaching the word of God. And people could simply touch Jesus and the power inside of him would heal them. He is powerful. He's powerful. He's got universal power. The power inside of him. His holiness, his righteousness was power. The way we touch Jesus is through receiving by faith the power that he has freely provided to us. The way we touch Jesus is through receiving by faith the power that is freely provided to us. He has provided the power of healing to us. But we receive it through faith. We have the power. 
Because when Jesus gave the commission, he says, go throughout the earth, preach the gospel, and heal the sick. Lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. This was what Jesus gave to his disciples. Later became apostles. He gave them power to lay hands upon the sick, and that they would be healed. This is God Almighty we're talking about. This is the all-powerful one. This is the all-knowing one, and we just need to reach out through faith and receive that power of healing. Our Lord, our healer, He, Jesus, the universal restorer. He wants to see you and I well. God have no pleasure in us being sick. He made us perfect. I heard the psalmist David says, Lo, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We were made perfect. God made us perfect. And that is, God was pleased. And he did well. He wants to see us well. He wants to see you well. He wants to see us well. And in um, Psalms 107, verse 20 to 21, He sent His word and healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. He sent His word. Jesus only need to send His word. When we pray to God and we desire healing, Jesus just need to send his word and his word accomplish what he sent it. He sent his word. We are healed through the word as we have read before and deliver them from their destruction. The word deliver us from destruction because if we are not healed, we will die. God have no pleasure in the in the dead. He is the God of the living. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. All that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. That is saying, let us give God thanks. Let us give God thanks for send his word, for he sent his word to heal us. And to deliver us from destruction. Destruction is death. He sent his word to heal us. Our heart postures matter. It's important how we think. It's important in what we believe. It's important what we have in our heart concerning our happiness or joy or healing. It is important how we meditate upon God and upon His Word in thanksgiving. So the psalmist says, give thanks unto the Lord for His goodness. Give thanks. God sent His Word to heal you and to deliver you from all of your destruction. As you are standing in faith for healing, give thanks to the Lord. As we are standing in faith for healing, thank Him. As I said before, He has paid the price for our healing. He has paid the price for our salvation. He has paid the price for our hope and our joy and our peace. He has paid the price. 
He's paid the price. It is settled. We are free. The Bible says, They that the Lord set free are free indeed. We are free indeed. Because He sent His word to heal us. In Psalm 73, verse 26, My flesh and my heart fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. My flesh and my heart fail. I have no strength in my flesh. My heart failed. I feel weak. I have no strength. My flesh and my heart fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. What confidence. God wants us to have confidence in Him. Confidence in Him. Confidence. He wants us to trust Him. He wants us to believe in Him. He wants us to lean on Him. There will be times when you don't feel like anything is happening. That doesn't mean God is not at work in your life. Sometimes we're praying and we say, Oh, uh, God provides, God open doors, God do this, God do that, God do this, God do that. God open this door, God open this door. We sometimes we feel that nothing is going on. But when there's, when there's nothing down, when everything is down, everything is up for God. With God, nothing is ever down. God has got a plan for us. And sometimes we are praying for something, but God is not ready to give us the blessing. Not that he didn't hear, but he's not ready. He knows when we need it most. Sometimes we are praying for a healing, a deliverance. He knows when we need it most. And he will come. Sometimes it feels like nothing is happening. I'm praying, I'm praying, but nothing is happening. But Jesus is on the main line. He is on the main line. You don't feel like something for his word and his promise for your life is true. He wants you well, which means you don't have to believe in lies from the enemy about sickness. So all the devil tried to do is tell us that, oh, you're not going to get well. You are sick. You're going to remain sick. You're not going to get well. God is not hearing you, but God hear you. I'm here to tell you that if you're praying for something, I'm here to tell you God hear, heard you. God heard you. It's a time that when Daniel prayed and um, when he prayed and when he prayed and the Bible says that um, his prayer was not, he did not get the answer to his prayer. And he saw that the Prince of Age, uh, uh, Persia, held up his prayer, which we know was the devil. But God sent his mighty angel and loosed. So sometimes our prayer seems to be held up, but God is going to loose it. Our blessing may seem to be held up, but God is going to loose it. We know he will. We know he will. prayer. Father, I thank you for continuing to work and heal me even when I don't see it or feel it. That's a prayer. Thank him. You have not received it, but thank him. Confident. Thank you for continuing to work and to heal me even though I don't see or feel it. I am thankful that you never change. How you feel about me and I don't feel it in Jesus name. I am thankful that you never change. He is just the same. The same Jesus that walks the shore of Galilee. The same Jesus who healed the sick. The same Jesus who rose the dead. 
the same Jesus who made the lame to walk. And he said, rise, take up your bed and walk. Power in the word of God. Rise, take up your bed and walk. The lame man. He says, rise, take up your bed and walk. That's the power of God. And so we see so many great things that he has done. In Matthew chapter 20 and verse 29, it says, And it shall not be among you, Matthew chapter 20 verse 29, Let him be a minister. Um, okay, behold, verse 30 says, Behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, and when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy upon us, O Lord, thou Son of David. Imagine when you're blind, you can't see. That's why you're blind. But the two blind men sitting by the wayside, they heard that Jesus, the universal restorer, was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy upon us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them. Imagine everyone saying, Keep quiet. Keep quiet. The Lord is about his business. Keep quiet. They rebuke them because they should hold their peace. Because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy upon us, O Lord, thou son of David. This universal restorer of our health was passing by. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will thou that I should do unto you? And they said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. And Jesus had compassion upon them and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight. And they followed him. The universal restorer is Jesus. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is our Provider. He is everything. Hold on to Jesus. Trust in the Lord. Lean upon the Lord. And he will bring us through. Praise the name of the Lord. May the Lord bless you, my brethren, as we trust in the good Lord. As we continue to lean upon him. As we continue to have faith in him. Knowing that he has the power. And there's nothing, nothing impossible for our God to do. God bless you, brethren. I reach to the end of our teleconference service. And um, God bless everyone that has joined us. And, you know, we, 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 need to, we need to continue in faith, in trusting in the Lord. And we need to, you know, step out. Step out on our faith. We need to just believe in Him, our God and our Creator, and we shall be well. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. This time I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask Sister McLean. Sister McLean, God bless you. I'm going to ask you to give us a few thoughts before. Before. Morning. 
Yeah, I'm going to ask you to give us a little thought before. I uh, also see Sister um, Mother Claire Mills there too as well. But I'll let you go, Sister McLean, and just give us a words of encouragement. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Brother Tess. Good evening, Good evening. Oh, Brother Tess, you have, a, you have well said, you have well done, you have covered everything from Genesis to Revelation. Sitting down here listening to you, talking about the healing and belief and the faith. And you know, and when we pray and we are sick and we pray, we should believe that when we pray and ask God to heal us, we are healed. Yes, the enemy will come and, and the pain will come back and the problem will come. But remember, you are healed. You know, but the enemy always, uh, always come to in, in intervene and always try to discourage us. You know, and you know, let on to want to make our faith get weak. But we must continue in faith and hold on to our faith and believe what the Lord said. He has done it yes. because he cannot lie. And as um, Isaiah 53 and, ver and verse 5 says, He was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace were upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. You know, because, uh, you know, healing is the children bread, and when we pray in faith, we are to believe, you know, because there are so many things that are happening. You know, I remember last week, Sunday, I sit where I'm sitting here now, and I was saying that, um, there is attack and attack the, um, in the family, but I'm still holding on to God's unchanging hand. Yes. And didn't and didn't know what was going to uh, was going to hear a very sad news. And I think it was on Thursday. You know, I could uh, I could stay here and earn her that one of my grandson um, in America died. You know, had it not been for God's mercy. And had it not been, I keep praying for them and cover them under the blood of Jesus and say, no weapon that is formed against my family shall prosper. Amen. And when the was sent out the picture of his, of one of his leg and the other and his knee, it was swollen. It, it's not a nice picture to look on. It's very disgusting. And he, when I call, I couldn't call him the same time because I was feeling so down and feeling, you know, so bruised yeah. in that, but I said, thank God it could be worse. I called him the following night and I asked him, was asking him what, what, what went wrong. And he was saying, he was telling me that um, he worked with some disabled people and they were going to take them somewhere like a frontier or whatever, taking them out, the workers. And they were on the escalator, in the middle of the escalator, they were going up. And this um, one of the patients, um, he was standing in front of um, a next worker and him. But he was standing be, um, behind um, that guy because he was the one responsible for him. And it's very, he's a very stout guy, very big and heavy. Yeah. And the escalator started to get mal malfunction function. going backward going backward going spinning and he fell <clears throat> the guy the guy fell on him and him fall, oh, fall on the escalator oh my god and it was going down because the thing was going backward and some of them fall but he got the worst uh, um the, the 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 worst damage because mm. his foot is like I don't know. It's like a digging a hole. Oh my that's, God! That's how. That's how one of his foot. Oh and my God! The next knee was so swollen. Oh God! And uh, when I, I say, I said to him, you "Know what? His mercy. It could be worse. Yes. If I wasn't praying, I don't know." He said when he laid down on the escalator there and it was um going backward instead of going forward. Him said, "Me dead now. A dead." Oh me my Lord! Can you imagine? <laughs> I said, Mercy wrote your name. Oh, and God. I said, you have to change your lifestyle. You have to give yourself to the Lord because uh, I'm telling you, it could be his neck. Yes. If his whole foot could have 
gone. Yes. He got five stitches in it. Oh, God. You know? So I'm telling you, he, he's just happy. I tell you, God's mercy kept him. Yes. You know, and it is good to pray and believe that when you pray, Jesus hears and he answers, you know. And I have this little song. Um, I know my voice is not um, that, but uh, I will just truck it and uh, truck it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. My anchor holds in spite of the storm. And the anchor holds, true, though the ship is battered, and the anchor holds, though the sails are torn, and I have fallen on my knees as I face the raging seas, the anchor holds in spite of the storm. Mm. I just want my anchor to hold. Yes. Because this song keep coming to me from last month. My anchor holds. And God has given me, the, um, I remember one morning I was asleep. I was sleeping and in the end of it was daylight. And this lady came to me and she said to me, Isaiah 54 and verse 17, mm. and she repeated it, no weapon that is formed against you yes. shall prosper. And I woke out of my sleep. And for that reason, these words keep me going. These, keep, these words keep me mm. strong. In spite of the storm, my anchor holds. Praise God. Though my sails may be torn, I know that my anchor holds. Because I have a friend who stick it closer than a brother. You know, I'm just holding on to my faith and just trusting God that he will come through for us. This is my few words in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Sister McLean, my Lord. It's so sad for the young man. Um, you so know, sometimes, you know, we don't know where the danger lies. Only God knows. I mean, Only but God knows. God, yeah. God is good anyway because His mercy he was there. Right, I think He could have lost His leg. The way it sounds like He could have lost His leg, but God's mercy was there for Him. And you know, yeah, so God thank God. God. Right. Thank God He didn't lose His leg, you know, but He could have lost His leg, oh, I imagine. Yeah. How, how horrific experience, you know. But you know, thank God anyway. We have to give God thanks that it wasn't worse. And he could have he could have lost his life. You know, so we have to look at the positive. He's alive as well, you know, he's other, you know, so we have to say, you know, God mercy was there on him. My God. God is good. Let us continue to trust and believe in him. You know, that he's he's a true and living God. And he loves us, he cares for us, he wants us to be healthy, happy. He wants us to be free. He don't want us to be suffering in any way. It's not the will of God for us to suffer. It is not the will of God no, for us to no. suffer. It's not the will of God for us to be in pain and suffering and trials and tribulation. It's not the will of God. So, you know, just thank God for every day. You know, and remember, it could be much worse. Amen. God bless you, I see Pastor Winston, Mother Claire, God bless you there. Um, and also, God bless you, Sister Rose. Sister Rose, I mean, can you close us off? With, uh, give us a thought of, on your heart or a song? Um, well, the, the message was a great message, and you talked about the, with the issue of blood. And actually, my apologies for hearing um, Sister McLean. I dear Sister McLean, what happened to your grandson? And yeah, we will keep him yeah. in our prayers as well, my darling. Yeah. Um, yeah, the issue of blood. I, how powerful that message is because I can imagine what she went through. I went through the woman of the issue of blood for over a year, so I know what that was like. And the doctors did I have to yes, eat yes. beef. I have to be having spinach because I could easily just go down the road and pass out. I would be going to work, coming back, and basically the woman with the issue of blood was just coming down me as I'm walking home mm. from, from work with four children. And um, I know it's like a mother who knows. He's the one that was clearing it up. And it was everywhere. It was everywhere. If I ever moved to just wash up dishes, that started. Uh, it was horrid. I felt so weak. And I have to take iron tablets as well. Everything because, said, because you're losing so much blood, you feel so weak, you've got you know energy. So this woman, at 12 years, 
12 years. That. It was really torture for me. 12 years. I couldn't even go anywhere after to be asking my husband to check me over to see if, you know, I've got anything on me. It was that bad, embarrassing, uncomfortable. I feel weak, I feel fed up, then I'm getting cramped, I feel a lot of pain. It was horrendous. So that woman, wow, she had, she had a need. She was desperate. And God helped her, and she just knew that it's Christ. And if you just touch the hem of his garment, you can't do that with the doctor. Yes, you can't with, but with God, yes, by faith, we have to believe as well. And God helped yeah. me with that. And after I seeked help and everything, God helped me. And thank you, Jesus. Obviously, I have no longer that situation. So, yeah, I'm just going to read a little verse. Um, Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord, oh, oh my soul, soul and all that, that is in me. Bless His oh, oh, holy name, and He has, has done, done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. Oh, I have touched the the hem of his garment, and his blood made me whole. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. And you will find it's not to be easy to hear And he is passed by this moment. Your need is supplied. Reach out and, and touch, touch the, the Lord, Lord as He passes. Oh, reach out and touch the Lord, Lord as He passes by. You will find, find He's not too busy. Hear your cry. And he is, is passing by at this moment. moment supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my dear sisters. God bless you and God bless everyone. Let us join our teleconference, Pastor Winston, Minister. Uh, my dear mother Mills is on here as well. And my son Delion. And um, God bless you also, Sister McLean. And I just want to have a short prayer. And anyone else, Lord, I thank you for everyone that's joined. I pray you bless us and keep us, cover us under your blood, protect us from every danger, seen and unseen. Have your way, we pray. Bless us and keep us, guide and protect us. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.